Hello, today I'm going to be sharing with you why I believe video games deserve more credit and how some should be considered a form of art. Unfortunately, most older people tend to see video games as something only for kids or maybe even a waste of time. I personally wouldn't blame them for thinking this way considering a large target audience for many video games are children anyways. This is just because kids have more free time to play video games than adults. As a kid, you have little to no stress or responsibilities to handle that would be nowhere near as taxing as an adult would. It makes sense for video game companies' key demographics to sell to would be kids, considering that adults would typically have less time to just sit around and play video games. If you were to mention that you read books, watch movies, or TV in your spare time to an employer or worker, they wouldn't really think much of it. But if you mentioned you play video games as an adult, some people might think it's either childish or a waste of time. There's a stigma that video games are only for kids, yet there have been games made with the intent for adults to play and enjoy without using gimmicks like mature themes such as over-sexualization or graphic violence. I believe when done well, some video games can express powerful messages and underlying themes as well as make you really feel emotions in the same way a movie or book could. Some video games are more story driven than others, and as previously stated, when done well, a good story can really draw you in and make you feel a connection to it. One of my personal favorite video games of all time is Earthbound, a role playing game where you take the role of Ness, a small town kid. If I'm pronouncing his name right, Sigisato Itoi, the lead designer of Earthbound, created the game with the intention to stride away from the cliché courageous chosen hero to save the world in favor of a more down-to-earth, relatable character. In Earthbound, you can even name yourself and your party members to make it feel more like you and your friends are the protagonist of the story. Itoi also thought it would be a fun, innovative idea to make the RPG silly, unlike most RPGs at the time. The story starts off with a meteor landing in the middle of the night, so Ness checks it out to see it's not a bee, but a time traveler named Buzz Buzz. Buzz Buzz tells Ness that him and three other friends he will make along the way must defeat Gygus. And in order to do this, him and his new friends, Paula, a young psychic, Jeff, a genius, and Pooh, a mystic prince, must travel the world reclaiming all eight sanctuary locations to become strong enough to defeat Gygus. Gygus doesn't actually take any physical form, but is actually the manifestation of evil in its purest form and will try to influence everyone on Earth with evil and bad thoughts. Note that Gygus doesn't actually hypnotize anyone or anything, but specifically, it's described as influencing people. Soon after you meet Buzz Buzz, afterwards you find out Gaga's evil influence has made some animals and people become very aggressive, and even once defeated in a battle, they're described as either tamed or went back to normal, respectively. It's never directly stated, but Earthbound cleverly portrays real-world problems like gangs, cults, police brutality, pollution, lust, greed, and so much more. Even though the game may look very silly, and you have to fight enemies like mushrooms, zombies, aliens, hippies, piles of puke, and... Uh, whatever this thing is. It's all for a reason. And that's because Ness is still just a kid, He's seeing all these atrocities through the perspective of a child. Ness quite literally represents innocence, and throughout his long journey, it's not only about defeating evil, but it represents Ness having to grow up very quickly and lose his innocence for the greater good and sacrifice himself this way. It's, it sounds pretty deep, it's because it is. Later on, Ness enters his own subconscious and fights himself. He quite literally fights his own inner demons, and once he does, he acquires inner peace and becomes a much stronger person overall. 